Come on. Everybody say so much more. About God. God wants to do so much more in and through your life. Like huge, huge. God has so much more that he wants to do for you, in you, and through you. Don't believe me? Read your Bible. We serve a God of so much more, not a God of less, not a God of little, not a God who just wants to make you eke your way through life and barely get by and survive. We serve a God who wants to bless you to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. God wants to bring glory through you to his name by blessing you to be a blessing to people around you. How many would like to be a better blessing to the people around you? Like you'd like to be able to pay for people's meals at times, just bless people, pay for somebody's missions trip. Come on, half of y'all want to, the other half of y'all, there's an altar call at the end, develop a generous soul. <laughs> How many would like to be able to bless another family with Christmas presents, this in need this Christmas, this that can't afford it, be able to pay for some? God wants to do so much more, not just for you, so you can have everything to yourself, but so that you can be a vessel, not a reservoir, but a river of God's blessing. But there are conditions. Can I tell you, there are, in the Bible, there are conditions to stepping into the so much more life. And one of those conditions is an attitude of gratitude. And I want to title the sermon today, But First, Give Thanks. But First, Give Thanks. Turn to someone next to you say, But First, Give Thanks. Now, I've seen t-shirts around, stickers around that say, But First, Coffee. How many of y'all have seen those t-shirts? But First, Coffee. And, and basically what they're saying is, I can't do anything. I cannot operate in life unless I've had my Starbucks, unless I've had my espresso, unless I have my coffee. Some t-shirts say, but first McDonald's. Y'all are like, I haven't seen those t-shirts. <laughs> I saw it. I know I saw it. But there's all kinds of things that people have, but first priorities. And I want to challenge us to be a church that lives a lifestyle of, but first give thanks. Instead of coming to God first with your request, first with your complaints, first with your frustrations, but first give thanks. And I'll tell you this, it is a secret to the kingdom of God. It's a secret that unlocks doors that you have been waiting to walk through. I would say this, this sermon I'm about to preach is possibly the most important sermon I've preached all year. Because in this sermon, I'm gonna give you a key to the so much more God has for you. Let me say this about gratitude. Gratitude can do for you what nothing else will do. Having an attitude of complaining can't do things that gratitude will have. Gratitude can open doors for you that begging will never open, manipulation will never open, uh, constantly complaining, nagging, it will never open. Gratitude can win you favor in your workplace. Gratitude can earn you a raise faster than asking for one. Gratitude can get you a promotion. Gratitude opens people's ears and I, gratitude can turn a bad day into a good day. Gratitude can make a poor man feel rich, but ingratitude can make a rich man feel miserable. Because here's the deal. If you have everything you want, but you don't have a grateful heart, then nothing is ever enough. I want to take you to a scripture where this key starts to unlock the kingdom. It's in Luke 17, verse 11. Luke 17, verse 11. You can make some noise this morning. Come on, come on. Luke 17, there's this story that Jesus encounters. This is a true story, a moment in Jesus' life where really I think his ministry and, and what happens in this moment takes a major shift. Jesus had come for the Jewish people. He said, I've, I've come to rescue my people. He was a Jew. He was born, uh, uh, to, born, born through Mary and Joseph, the Jewish family of God, the tribe of Judah. But every now and then, people outside of the Jewish people, so Gentiles, they would come to, to learn from Jesus and to ask Jesus to help them. And this one day, he encounters some Gentiles. That would be you or me, anyone who's not a, a, a Jew by birth or by blood. And it says, it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he, as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood a far way off. Now, this is what leprosy does. Leprosy separates you from the rest of the group. So leprosy, it was so bad in that time, there was no cure for it. No, no doctors could cure leprosy. If you found out you had leprosy, you basically had to divorce your wife, divorce your husband. You couldn't be next to another human being because it was so contagious. So lepers were exiled to their own colony away from society. 
This, imagine waking up one morning and you start to notice your skin is getting really dry and it starts to crack, but then it starts to literally decay and you're losing parts of your, your fingers, your ear, your nose. That's what would happen. They would wake up and they'd start to notice it. And as soon as they did, they literally had to leave their kids, leave their spouse, leave their company, leave their job. And they had to rely basically become a beggar, a poor man, rely on people who would come and leave food outside the city that they would then go and get later on at night, and that's how they survived. These 10 lepers, they were so tired of just eking their way through life, just barely getting by, surviving, and so they came to Jesus because they knew Jesus could heal them, but it says they stood a far way off, so they're far enough from Jesus so, so you know, they're not gonna spread the leprosy, and they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And what does Jesus do? By the way, what is mercy? Mercy is unmerited favor. In other words, they didn't pay for it. They didn't earn it. They weren't entitled to it. They were asking God, Lord, give us what we don't deserve. Lord, just would you bless us? We can't pay for a miracle. We can't earn it. We don't have any money. There's no way we could get this. Could you please bless us with a miracle? Heal us. Watch what Jesus says. He says, go and show yourselves to the priest. In other words, this healing is motion activated. The breakthrough you're waiting for, it's motion. As you do what I'm telling you to do, it's going to happen. So they start to move. And as they're moving, all of a sudden they start to feel their ear growing back, their nose. Oh, there's that pimple. It's back. Oh, I'm so thankful I can feel the pimple. I haven't been able to feel that pimple in 20 years. Thank God for pimples. Right? Can you imagine being thankful for pimples? Because you lost it and you got the pimples back? And you feel good. And there's my thumb, my middle fingers back again. I don't worry, I'm not gonna use it the wrong way anymore. <laughs> I've got my legs back. I'm... And guess what? They are so excited. What would you do if you got blessed with something? You got an inheritance, you got something you didn't deserve. I wonder what the first thing you would do. For some of them, I bet they hadn't had a good cup of coffee in a long time, but first, coffee, 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 coffee. Maybe one of them was, but first, I gotta go kiss my wife. I haven't kissed her in 20 years. But first, I gotta go hug Liam and Benny, my kids. I haven't got to play with my boys in 20 years. That's the first priority on my list, is to go and hug my kids. And you wouldn't judge me for that because it's family first. But first, I gotta go get my job back. I haven't had a job in 20, I've been barely surviving. I gotta go get my job back. <laughs> I gotta go get that promotion that I almost was about to get right before this leprosy hit. I gotta go get that bonus that's been waiting. I gotta get that paycheck. But first, me. But one of them, it says one out of 10. You should read this story, it's powerful. It says one of them in verse 15, one guy goes, oh my gosh, <sighs> before I kiss my wife, before I go to Starbucks, before I spend this big check, before I go buy that boat that I've always wanted, before I buy that motorcycle, before I go and do anything, but first, I've gotta give thanks because he's the one that gave this to me. Everybody say, but first, give thanks. Gratitude is not gratitude until it is outwardly expressed. Gratitude isn't gratitude unless it's outwardly expressed. It's one thing to feel grateful. Like, I imagine some of those nine, they were like, man, I feel so grateful. <sighs> I'm going to go kiss my wife. I feel so grateful. But they didn't turn around to say thank you. Gratitude is not gratitude until it's expressed. It's one thing to feel thankful for Chick-fil-A. It's another thing to go up to the waiter and say, thank you. And they say, my pleasure. You want some Chick-fil-A sauce with that? Yes, I will. Thank you so much. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's one thing to feel thankful for your spouse, but imagine this, a marriage has been together for 20 years, they're starting to have some issues, the wife goes, we gotta go see a counselor. The husband goes, we don't need to see a counselor. There's nothing wrong with our marriage, we're fine. The wife goes, we're going to see a counselor. Fine, so he drags his feet, they go see a counselor. The counselor's in the office. He goes, what seems to be the problem? The wife goes, well, he just doesn't value me the way that he used to value me. I mean, when we were dating, he valued me so much. When we were engaged, I felt like I was so valuable in his eyes. Hey, when we went on our honeymoon, I was so valued. I felt so valued, but I haven't felt valued in 20 years. The husband gets upset. What are you talking about? I don't value you. What are you talking about? I provide food on the table. Of course I value you. 
I put a roof over your head. Of course I value. And she's getting upset. She goes, if you value me, how come you haven't told me? You haven't expressed it. You haven't given me a card in years. You haven't taken me on a date. Why? Because gratitude. And he could say, well, I feel grateful for you. I feel like you're valuable to me. Yeah, but gratitude is not gratitude until it's expressed. This is a principle that can change marriages. It can change your workplace environment. I feel thankful for my boss. Some of y'all are like, no, I don't. <laughs> I feel thankful for my paycheck. Yeah, but when's the last time you said thank you to the person who gave it to you? When's the last time, when's the last time you said thank you to your spouse? Thank you to the people in your life. Thank you to God. And, and the wife looks at the husband and she goes, maybe if you expressed your gratitude more, I would feel more valued if you expressed it. Why? Because gratitude is not gratitude until it's outwardly expressed. So this guy, he's watching all nine of them run off to their first priority, but first coffee, but first wife, but first my kids, but first my job, but first my career, but first I got to climb the ladder to success, but first I got to spend this inheritance on my boat. And this guy goes, no, 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 but first it says in the Bible, he starts running back to Jesus. I need someone to play the part of Jesus. I need someone, I need somebody to play the part of Jesus. I need somebody to play. Will you play the part of Jesus? Will you play the part of Jesus? Come on, give Jesus a big hand this morning. Will you stand right here? Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> the Bible says he gets so excited with an attitude of gratitude that that one out of ten. One out of 10, one out of 10. What's one out of 10? What's the percentage of one out of 10? Is that 10%? Is that a tithe? Okay, yeah, yeah, it's 10%. Okay, so, oh, this message is about to shift in a second. Don't go take a bathroom break. I'm about to unlock the door that you've been wanting to walk through. So 10%, one out of 10, one out of 10 goes, oh. But first, if gratitude isn't gratitude unless it's expressed, I'm thankful to God. I sing praise to God. Lip service is great, but God's like, I need some life service because I don't want to just bless your wallet. I want to bless your life. And instead of running first to buy something, it says he turns around, runs towards Jesus, falls at his feet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. 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 Now you might think that's a little dramatic, Paul, but the Bible says that's what he did. He literally face planted on the ground and he said, thank you. He returned to the one who had given it to him in the first place. And Jesus looks at him and says, are you the only one? Are you the only one to give thanks? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Weren't, weren't 10 of you blessed? Didn't I bless your company? Didn't I bless your brother, your sister, your parents? How come they haven't returned to give me thanks? Where are the others that I Blessed, where's the other marriages I restored? Where's the other businessmen that I prospered? Have they not forgotten where it all came from? Have they forgotten where they got wealthy? Have they forgotten where they got healed, set free from that addiction? Have they forgotten that I forgave them of that dirty, dark, hush room secret? Where are they? And then Jesus says, you're the only one. And he looks at him. And he says this to him in verse 19, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Thank you so much. Give him a big hand. Now, follow me with this for a second. That word well, in the New King James Version, it says whole. Your faith has made you whole. The Hebrew and Greek translations for this, there's a word called sozo. That's what Jesus said. Your faith has made you sozo. The other nine got healed. But because you came back to give thanks, I pronounced sozo over you. You go, well, what, what's sozo? <laughs> I wanted to know too. I looked it up. Sozo was salvation. Complete salvation. Jesus broke the boundaries of only coming to save the Jews that day to save a Samaritan man. 
a Gentile, someone like you and me. He said, today, not only are you healed, but your attitude of gratitude has opened the door. Your butt first give thanks mindset has opened the door for salvation to your house, to your family. Get up. The message version says you are now healed and saved. Come on, give God praise this morning. <laughs> gratitude towards God must be expressed. It can't just be a feeling. It's got to be a real expression. And I imagine that those other nine guys, I, I bet that they had a feeling of thanks, but possibly some of them didn't. And I want to share with you three ways to develop a but first give thanks lifestyle today that we're going to really look at over the next few minutes that are going to help us to step into the kingdom of God that he, he has so much more. The kingdom of God expands to those who can embrace what I'm about to share with you today. Are you guys ready for it? Okay, so number one, you've got to deal with the selfish heart. I'm gonna give you three ways. Number one, you've got to deal with the selfish heart. The holidays are coming up, but the truth is there's always something coming up. There's always a reason to try to hold on to what you have. There's always a reason to make life about you. There's always you know, this mindset of, but first me, but first me. I gotta take care of me, 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 before I look out for others or I look to give thanks to God. Selfishness produces a few different parasites in your life. Parasites that eat away the attitude of gratitude. One of those parasites that selfishness produces is entitlement. Entitlement, well, I deserve this healing. It's about time God healed me. I've been sick for 20 years. I earned this, I paid for it. I worked hard, I've been surviving. I'm entitled to this. Entitlement kills gratitude in relationships. Because when your spouse does something nice for you or your parents do something nice for you, you're like, finally, about time you bought me that toy. And they're like, I ain't buying you another toy. <laughs> I ain't blessing you again. It frustrates people when others feel entitled to the blessings they get. When you get a raise, when you get a promotion, when you get something, they're like, finally did something for me. That mindset and attitude kills gratitude. And when you kill gratitude, you kill the favor of God on your life. Why? Because gratitude opens the door for more of God's favor, more of God's sozo in your life. Life. It's a principle. Gratitude is a principle. Even if you're here today and you don't even believe in Jesus, I'm saying this right now. You're in the right place if you don't, because I'm telling you, this place is contagious. You're about to step into a life of victory. But you've got to develop a but first give thanks. You've got to deal with the selfish heart. Entitlement is so rampant in our society. I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled. And so we give to get. If we give something, we're like, I better get something back because I'm entitled to get something back. How about we just give to give? How about we just give with no strings attached? And how about when you get blessed, instead of just going, you actually go, thank you. I didn't deserve that, thank you. That was really nice of you, honey. Thank you so much. Thanks for helping out. Thank you for taking the kids to school. Thank you, mom and dad. Thank you, thank you, mom. Thank you, grand grand. Thank you, Sharissa. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Kasha. Thank you, Ty and Debbie. Go around, just start saying thank you to people and watch what God does in your life. You open up the kingdom when you start saying thank you. You do, you do. When you deal with this, selfishness produces parasites like entitlement. It also produces parasites it's that, that, that constantly are looking for other people to meet every need of your life. A negative focus, what you lack, a complaining focus. This is why the Israelites couldn't enter the promised land because even when God gave them manna, it wasn't good enough. They were like, manna, we wanted pizza. <laughs> God, God gives them quail, they're like, we wanted steak, we wanted filet mignon. <laughs> and so you go to church, you go to relationships, you go to your workplace, and it's constantly not good enough. Because you're constantly, one, you get stuck in a comparison trap when you're selfish. You're looking at what others have that you don't, and you're like, man, wish we had that. Wish we got that blessing. Wish God blessed us like Paul and Anna Gomez. <laughs> Put it into practice, and he will. Put it into practice, and he will. And, 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 and selfishness produces this mindset of constant disappointment. Disappointed with people. Like they didn't do enough for you. God didn't do enough for you. Well, yeah, God gave me a car, but he didn't give me a really nice car. Yeah, God gave me, you know, God gave me this spouse, but this spouse has flaws. So do you, my friend. So do you. Well, God gave me kids, but they just complain all the time. Listen to you. You reap what you sow. 
wish my kids would be more respectful of those little brats. <laughs> Reap what you sow. Wish they wouldn't name call those little punks. <laughs> Listen to yourself. You, you, we become so cynical and disappointed and complaining and constantly crabby. And, and we've got to deal with this selfish mindset of me, my, I'm not getting what I want, what I deserve. God not meeting all my needs. He's got to do more for me, 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 me. And if you will break that mindset, not only will you be a happier person for others to be around, you will magnetically draw the favor of God and more opportunities and more increase. If you will become a more thankful, thankful people are happier people. It is a scientific fact. Thankful people are more happier than complaining people. And there are people that are hoping that you will get a revelation during this sermon. You're like, I'm going to buy this for that person. And God's like, I'm trying to bring it to you first. But first, you give thanks. Number two, you got to deal with a grieving heart. A grieving heart. Selfishness attacks you before you give thanks, before you give a tithe. Selfishness attacks you before you give an offering because it's trying to hold you back from giving it. Grief attacks you after you give. It's like you give and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have given that. <laughs> How many have given something away and then you kind of like had a little bit of grief afterwards? Am I the only one that's felt that? Yeah. I, like I, I would find myself at lunchtime as a kid and in high school and people would somehow twist my arm to give them my favorite food that was in my lunch sack and I'd give it and then I'd be like, I shouldn't have given that to them. I want it back now, right? I, wanna, I shouldn't have given them my jacket. I shouldn't have given God that money because my car just broke down and I needed that exact money to go fix my car. And if I wouldn't have given that money, then I could have had that money to fix my car. And God's going, don't you trust me? Don't you trust me? Don't you, tr why won't you just trust me? This last week I was with, uh, on yesterday I was at the Tulsa Dream Center. I was with my sons, Liam and Benaya and my wife. And they had this little toy, little Mickey Mouse boat toy and had stickers on it. I don't even know where they got it. And it honestly wasn't that amazing of a toy, but for them, they had just so loved that toy yesterday. They were just talking about it, walking around, flaunting their toy. And Ashley goes, you should give that away, Liam. He goes, no. So then I knelt down. I go, Liam, you're going to give that toy away, but I want you to decide to give that toy away. And he goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, you're going to force me to decide what kind of, what is this? I go, Liam, you should give that toy away. No, my toy, mine. You don't have to teach kids to say mine. They come out of their mother's womb saying mine, mine, mine. It reminds me of, I was on this mission trip in Cambodia and we were ministering in this village. This was like six, seven years ago. And there were all these monkeys around everywhere. And so our team's taking pictures because we've never seen monkeys outside the zoo and it's just cooler to see it outside the zoo. So we're taking pictures, the monkeys are just staring at us, you know? But there was this one big monkey, huge, like really overweight, obese monkey. <laughs> it was sad, it was, um, he had all these bananas around him. Literally, he had taken all the bananas from all, the other monkeys were like skin and bones, just walking through there, <laughs> shaking. Because this big monkey had taken all the bananas, my mom, my bananas. This big monkey sitting there, and he was self-destructing. He didn't know it, man, he was dying. He was dying. He had become a reservoir instead of a river. He wasn't sharing the bananas. He was just holding them all to him, just a big old, big banana man, monkey, and got it all. And, and the other monkeys are sad and they're feeling, you know, like left out because they don't get the bananas. And I'm thinking as I'm watching Liam go, mine, mine, mine. I'm like, please don't turn into that monkey. Please don't. <laughs> please don't hold all those bananas to yourself. And, uh, and I'm like, Liam, give it away. I said, don't you trust me? He goes, no. <laughs> he does trust me. He trusts me, guys. But in that moment, he didn't trust me. You've been that way with your parents or with God sometimes. God's like, trust me in this. And you're like, no. And Liam was like, no, mine. I said, Liam, let's, let's go. Get. And Benny, our other son, ran over and he's holding. He goes, mine. They were both saying mine. I was like, it can't both be mine. It's, they're not even saying ours, you know. So I'm trying to break, break them free from this stingy mindset. I said, let's go give it away. So they finally, I convinced them, they're like crying and screaming. They're walking it over to the boy together. Liam's holding one side, Benny's holding the other side. It was their little idol, you know? And by the way, the number one idol in America is money. Big, biggest idol in the world is money. 
Jesus, by the way, guys, the Bible talks about money 2,333 times. 2,333 times. It talks about money a lot in the Bible. Just to put it in contrast, the word prayer is mentioned 500 times in the Bible. How many of y'all think prayer is a big deal to God? It's huge. It's huge. You can't be a Christian without prayer. Like, prayer is important. But the fact that God talks about money five times, almost five times more than he talks about prayer, why would God do that? Because he knew that money would be a bigger struggle than prayer. You could pray all day, but it takes guts to actually be generous and to trust God with 10% of your money. So I go, Liam, let's, let's bring it. So they're carrying their little toy. They hand it, to, they bring it up to the little boy and the little boy goes, Thank you. You know, he's six years old, takes the toy, and Liam's watching him play with it. Liam's like, <sighs> you know, like Lord of the Rings, like, I need it back. You know, <laughs> he's grieving that he gave it away. Grief attacks us when we try to give, it tries to hold us back from giving to God more. I said to Liam, I said, I said, don't you believe that mommy and daddy, can, can bless you with more toys? He goes, when? <laughs> when are you gonna bless me with another toy? I go, Liam, we do this with God when we give. When is he gonna pay me back my tithes? When is God gonna give me what I deserve? And God's like, hold up. That's stingy giving. That's grieving giving. And it grieves his heart. And he's like, man, I'm trying to set you free. I'm trying to help you to be a bigger blessing in your life. I can bring so much more to you if you will break, if you will deal with the grieving heart. I wanna bless someone today. I wanna bless someone with lunch today, but I, I just don't have any money right now with me. Oh. Oh my goodness, Daniel, $100. Y'all are like, why did he get up so fast? <laughs> the only reason Daniel was able to get up so fast is because I gave him this hundred right before service. It wasn't his. He didn't have it an hour ago. I gave it to him. That's why it was so fast. He was so, it was so fast. He was, it was so easy for him to give it because it wasn't his. He was just a steward. Before those 10 guys got healed, they were all carrying leprosy and Jesus says your healing's coming they didn't have it and all of a sudden they got it they didn't have it but once they got it some of them immediately felt like they were owners imagine if I had given Daniel this hundred right before service he goes thank you very much and I do the illustration in service and he doesn't get up we would have a conversation afterwards going now hold up <laughs> I needed you to give that but sometimes in life, we start getting blessed and we become owners instead of stewards. And we start acting like, well, I own that. Yeah, I own that, that's mine. That's my boat, my house, my car, my life, my money, my money, my money. And God's like, who gave you the breath in your lungs? Who blessed you with the talent that you have? You so talented, you so talented. And God's like, you wouldn't have had that talent had I not given it to you. And you're like, hold on, that's my hundred. And God's like, I'm only asking for 10%. I'm only asking you to be generous just to return and give thanks. Like just, just give thanks to God. And I can do, he did more with the 10%. He did, more, God always does more with the 10% than you could do with 100%. 100% in, in the Old Testament, 100%, he said, that's cursed. If you bring 10%, you all of a sudden open the door of the blessing on your life. You're like, yeah, that's old covenant. Actually, I'm gonna prove to you in these next 10 minutes that it's actually part of the new covenant too. Jesus had a lot to say about giving as well, that it's more than a figure. He actually watched the little widow that laid down her might, just one little might. He said that right there. He's looking for your heart. He's looking for your heart because your heart has a string, an invisible string connected to your wallet. And Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Number three, last point right here. In order to have a but first give thanks lifestyle, you've got to develop a generous heart. 
Number one, you gotta deal with the selfish heart. Number two, you gotta deal with the grieving heart. Number three, you gotta develop a generous heart. Generosity makes your life and your world open up so much more. There's so much more. I got a question today. Who here right now is like, like you are in a very, very difficult time financially. You're in a very, 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 you can't afford to even buy lunch today. You're here with one of your family members. You can't afford to buy lunch today. Where are you? Where are you? I want you to, I want you to stand up if that's you. Okay, right back there. We love you. God loves you. Now, I'm not doing that to be seen by y'all. I'm not doing that for that. I want you to know something. It means more to me to give to her than it means for her to receive from me. Giving, it changes you. More than it changes others, it changes you. It changes this mindset that I'll never have enough. It breaks a scarcity mindset. Scarcity is like that monkey that feels like he's never gonna have enough bananas. So he just keeps, he becomes a hoarder. He holds on to everything he has. And so when he sees a poor person or someone on the street that could just use some help, they just fallen on hard times, they just need someone just, just looking for a hand up. Just could you help me out right now? I promise you, I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying to find work, but could just use some help. When you start becoming a generous man, a generous woman, not only do you help meet people's needs, you change your life. God changes your life. If he has your heart, he can change your habits. He can change your life. He can change your marriage. He can change your family. I think generosity is probably one of the biggest character traits of God. In fact, it might be the key character trait. I asked a pastor once, I said, how often do you talk about giving to your church? This pastor pastors an amazing church in Alabama. He said, I talk about it every week. I said, man, doesn't that kind of frustrate the church members? He said, how can I talk about Christianity without talking about giving? He said, giving is at the core of every single message. How can you have a healthy marriage without a giving heart? How can you be a, a, a single that's devoted to God without having a giving heart? So he said, whether I'm preaching on singleness or marriage or parenting or grace or forgiveness, he said, every single topic in the Bible requires a giving heart, but people attach money with giving so they get frustrated, but giving is so much more than money. You can give your time, you can give encouragement, you can give your talents, you can show up at the Dream Center, you can give love. This week, you can give thanks to your family members. Call up your mom, tell her you're thankful. Call up your grandma, call up your kids. Write a note to your boss. Just say, man, I'm thankful that you've employed me. I'm thankful for this, I'm thankful for that. Watch what happens when you start developing a butt first give thanks lifestyle. I'm telling you, you'll come back to me and go, Paul, you don't realize what's happened in my life. I'll say, I knew it, it's a principle. It's in God's word. But you cannot separate gratitude from generosity. You cannot separate generosity from gratitude. Grateful people are generous people. Generous people are grateful people. So the final part of this is develop a generous heart. Now, the tithe came 500 years before the old covenant, before the law of Moses was given. In Genesis 14, verse 19, Abram, before he was Abraham, before the ham came around, before the bacon showed up, Abram, before his name changed, he had a heart change. And what happened was he started seeing a blessing in his life. He started seeing God show up. And there was this man who shows up in Genesis 14 named Melchizedek. He was the high priest. No one knows where he came from or where he went. In fact, he literally appears in scripture and we don't see his name again until Hebrews. And Hebrews tells us he was the form of Jesus Christ himself. This was 500 years before the Ten Commandments were given. So don't drop the old covenant on me for a second. Abram, here's Melchizedek. Melchizedek meets him out on a field and says, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. He says, Praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. All the increase you got came from God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The plane you got, the car you got, the money you got, the job you got. You're a steward, you're not an owner. 
And Abram gave him a tenth. Everybody say a tenth. A tenth is 10%. One out of 10 came back to God to give thanks. And God, in the next chapter, says, count the stars. I'm about to blow your mind. <laughs> I just get excited. I just hear God talking. Oh, I double dog dare you. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 says, bring the tithe into the storehouse. Test me in this. Try me in this. This is the only place in scripture where God says, you could test me. You could test me with this. Oh, I triple dog dare you. Try me out in this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. Now, what God wants to do in your life, again, he doesn't want to just bless your wallet. He wants to bless your life. He's going to bless you with opportunities. He's going to bless you with promotions. He's going to bless you with more uh, 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 work opportunities, clients. He's going to bless you with joy, with peace, with hope. It's going to be so much more than just money. Because a man can have all the money in the world and still feel miserable. What good is it to have a big wallet but have a poor soul? Right? So God says, I don't want to just bless your wallet. I want to bless your soul. I want to change your life. And generosity does this. It unlocks the kingdom of God in your life. Now you say, okay, Paul, that's Old Testament. Okay, now let me take the New Testament. Matthew 23, verse 23. Is it okay if I drop some scriptures on y'all this morning? Happy Thanksgiving. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. Now he's talking to preachers, right? He says, you're a hypocrite. And he was talking to preachers in this moment because preachers, they would tithe but they were rude to people. You've neglected justice. You haven't treated people fair. You've been showing favoritism to some people. All right, so he says, I want you to show justice. I want you to show mercy. I want you to show faithfulness to God, but I also don't want you to neglect the tithe. Jesus said it. If it was in red letters, how many of y'all think if Jesus said it, we should probably do it? All right, half of y'all are still deciding in your hearts. And you know what? It's okay. Join, join the conversation here, but let me say this. If you wanna live a blessed life, you've got to start accepting the principles that are in God's word. If you want to have so much more, I've heard people say, well, I couldn't afford to give to God. I can't pay God's bills, can't even pay my bills. If you keep that mindset, no matter how much you have, you'll never be able to afford to be a generous person. If young people got this right now, before all the zeros add to your paycheck someday down the road, I learned it at a young age. Give first, give first. It wasn't give last. Jesus doesn't wanna be an afterthought, he wants to be your first thought. So imagine if nine of those guys that got healed a few weeks later after they got their job back, after they hung out with their family, their friends, gone on a few vacations, done some things they wanna do, they go, hold up, I gotta go give God thanks. He's number 12 on the priority list. He'd go, God, I got some leftovers for you. Thank you so much. Jesus is like, okay. But there was one that came back first. He put it on the top of his budget line. But first, I'm gonna give God thanks. What happened? God does so much more. I've never met a person who doesn't put God first that says, God never meets my needs. Everyone who I've talked to that says, I put God first, they come to me and they go, man, my life has changed. My heart has changed. God has taken care of the needs in my life. He continues to provide for me. They're a new person. They don't have a complaining mindset. They don't gripe about everything. They're not constantly disappointed. They're not constantly cynical. They have a generous, grateful soul. Let me finish this message with this last thought. When Liam and Benny gave that toy to that little boy, he was so thankful. He said, oh, thank you. Liam's reaching for it. <sighs> Benny's screaming. Liam's looking at me, dad, when are you gonna get me another toy? And I'm just, you know, holding my head like, oh man, it's gonna be a lot of work to teach our kids generosity. But right in that moment, the mom of the boy, she goes, sir, sir, my son has something to give to your boys. I go, no, 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 we're here to feed you. We're, we're here to take care of y'all. We wanna bless you. She goes, no, don't rob me of my blessing, pastor. When she said that, man, <laughs> her little boy pulls out this big ninja turtle and he goes, here you go. Just freely, just gave it away. No grief, no selfishness. Just gave it. Liam grabs it real quick. I go, Liam, you better say thank you to that boy right now. Thank you. He was so excited. The little boy was so excited to give. But man, I said, ma'am, we, we don't need this. We, our boys don't need this. I'm, I'm about to take it from Liam. He goes, don't take it from me, you know. And she goes, no, I want to bless y'all. Now just hold the religious thoughts about Ninja Turtles being of the devil for a second. It was a blessing 
they wanted to give to us. And she said, don't rob me of this. Man, I start tearing up. I came to feed, but I ended up getting fed. I came to give, but I'm the one that ended up getting blessed. This is what gratitude and generosity do. You think you're the one that's giving, but you're the one that ends up getting blessed. I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. He's got a bigger Ninja Turtle than your little toy. He's got so much more. I see God up in heaven and he's like, come on, Paul. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like God's been wanting me to preach this message for a long time and I've just been waiting for it. But I just hear God up in heaven going, oh my goodness. I just see him. He's got like his hand and he's got so much and he's like, oh, if they would just stop being a damn. I'm not cussing. Uh, if they would stop being a damn, if they would let the water flow, I'm not cussing. He says, just if they would stop being a reservoir, once the water, I've got, I got so much more that I want to bring to them. I want to help, help their marriage. I want to heal what's going on in the relationships. I want to resolve some things they've been so frustrated about, but it starts with gratitude. Come into his courts with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter into his gates with praise on your lips. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Sing to the Lord a new song. All ye people, give praise to the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This morning, let's stand to our feet all over this place. If you would, just bow your heads and close your eyes. I believe there's a reason why I didn't want to do an offering at the end of this sermon. Because I didn't want anyone thinking that there was some sort of agenda here. That's why we did it in the beginning. But I truly believe there's some of you in this room. And God's wanting to take you to a new level. But he's asking you to trust him. He's asking you to trust him. A tithe is 10% of your increase. Maybe you're here today and you say, Paul, I, I want to. I really want to become a generous guy. I want to become a generous girl. I really want to be the kind of parent that raises my kids to live generous that teaches them the act of generosity, consistent giving. I wanna help open their hearts to the kingdom of God. But for some reason, I've just been, I've been held back, Paul. For whatever reason, I've been cynical towards the church or towards God, I've been complaining, I've been disappointed. I, I feel like I haven't had all my needs met. I've, I've been frustrated lately financially. I've been stressed to the max. And today, I believe God wants to bring some healing in that area of your heart. I, I truly believe God's saying, let's deal with that. Let's deal with the grief. Let's deal with the entitlement. Let's deal with the disappointment. Let's deal with those, those unrealistic expectations. Like it's always got to happen on your timeline, your way. I want to get you to start praying prayers like thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, you do it your way, just on time. Not early, not late, right on time. God, I'm trusting in you. I believe God's wanting to do this in your heart with heads bowed and eyes closed. If that's you today, if you're saying, man, this message was speaking to me and there's some areas in my heart that I need to surrender to God, I want you to lift your hand up today all over this room. Yeah, hands going up from the front to the back. It's between you and God, but today God's saying, come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Test me in this. Try me in this. Trust me in this. I do have more that I want to do in you and through you. Secondly, you're here today and you've become weary and well-doing. You've been giving out, but for some reason you feel like you're not seeing the breakthroughs you've been waiting on. If that's you, if you've just felt weary and well-doing, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for those of you that have just been weary in it. You've been weary. You kind of wanted to stop at some point. You've wanted to throw in the towel on this whole generosity and giving. And, but I believe today God's about to give you a second win, fresh win, fresh fire. And I believe God has so much more by the end of this year that he wants to do in your life. I believe, I truly believe by December 31st, there's some breakthroughs that are going to happen in some people's lives. I believe in 2019, there's a new season that's going to happen in the new year. But God says, I need your heart first. I'm not asking for your wallet. I'm just asking for your heart. I'm just asking you to give up that area in your heart that's been holding you back. Last thing you hear today, you say, Paul, I'm not right with God. I don't know if my name's in the book of life. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I don't know. Maybe you're here today and you say, I've sinned. I've kind of backslidden. I've been going back to old vices, old addictions. I've been slipping into some wrong things, things I shouldn't be doing. But I'm ready to surrender to Jesus. Today is that day. He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to give you a fresh start. He's ready to be your Lord and Savior. If that's you, lift your hand. Today's your day for salvation. Salvation. Yeah, come on. 
If you raised your hand for any of those or wanted to, would you take a step out from your seat? Come and join me at this altar. Today is a day of thanksgiving. Today is a day of surrender. Today is a day of new beginnings. Come on, join me at this altar. I want to encourage you today with this. You never know how much you have until you see some areas in the world where people literally have nothing. And it changes your perspective. I remember going to the Philippines a long time ago on a mission trip with my parents and later going back with our church. And we went to this very, very poor village. It was called Benin. And there was thousands of people that lived in a garbage dump, didn't have shoes, didn't have pants, didn't have shirts, literally 16 year olds running around in underwear because that's all they had. They had bags of glue. They sniffed glue every day because sniffing glue helped put away the appetite for food. And since they couldn't afford to eat food, had no food, they'd sniff the glue to try to solve their, their issues with their stomach. So, so malnutrition. It was, I, I remember just sitting there and weeping because I think about all the things we complain about in America and, and just the lack of gratitude. My Wi-Fi is not working. My flight got delayed. The boss didn't give me this. And I want to encourage you this week that you wake up every morning and have a butt first give thanks that you would just say lord i thank you for breath in my lungs thank you for clothes that i can wear thank you for food on my table lord i thank you for a friend in my life i thank you for a church god where i can worship god air-conditioned church lord a heater during the winter lord i thank you god for a coat to wear and i want to encourage us today before we dismiss that you would take literally just 30 seconds to tell one person in this room what you're thankful for you might have a list but just Tell them one thing you're thankful for. But before you do, I want to pray for you. And I want you to pray a prayer with me. Just say this with me. Say, Jesus, I'm all yours. I repent of selfishness, of doing things my way, of complaining so much. Lord, I choose to give thanks to you first, to give thanks to others around me. Lord, I receive your forgiveness, your mercy, your grace, your salvation. Thank you for giving your life for me. You died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead to give me eternal life with you. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you for the talents you've given me. Thank you for the life you've given me. Lord, I choose to live for you. I'm all yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, I pray that message spoke to you, encouraged you, and reminded you God has so much more for your life. But first, you've got to learn to give thanks. As you give thanks, God's gonna to continue to open doors and release opportunities and favor in your life. Just like we saw in the scripture today and the sermon today, God truly does have more and he wants to give it, but it starts with us living an attitude of gratitude and expressing that. Maybe you're watching today and you wanna start becoming a giver, maybe an online giver. We have a link for you to do that right here. If you'd like to make that decision, no pressure. But if you're saying, man, I wanna start be, being a giver, like the sermon talked to me today, I wanna start giving every week a part of my finances to God, to the kingdom of God, to help more people experience his love and hear the gospel. That's what your giving goes towards. It helps us continue to spread the love of Jesus and the message of Jesus near and far. So if you wanna do that, there's a link to do that. Last but not least, I wanna encourage you to continue to seek God and remember, as you come in every week and, and watch these messages, whether you're watching them from home or on your phone or on your laptop or iPad, whether at work or whatever, that you would continue to let God speak to you because God truly has so much more for you. Your best days are right in front of you.